My name is Mervyn Bishop. I was born in Brewarana, New South Wales. I, um, my family is mixed, and um, some of my people are Murawari, Milleroy, and uh, English, Scottish, Irish, the usual mix. Mum and Dad worked so that Cynthia and I were always well dressed. And I think we were kind of, what, as they would say, they're very flash because we've got all this lovely you know, clothes and shoes. I went, attended through my public school. I got a bursary from the Aborigines Welfare Board helped me with my education. And uh, quite a lot of people lived in Brewarana. A lot of Aboriginal folk uh, were transported from places like New Angledore across the 1936, to a big mission there, uh, which, is, which was out of town. And there were people who weren't on the mission lived around the river, riverbank. Um, a lot of good folks. Lovely people. Very Warren was kind of a divided town with Aboriginal folk, white folk. There were mixtures and um, people that were, got on with one another. I came to Dubbo in 1960, where I boarded at the Church of England Boys Hostel uh, for three years. A group of Sub editors on a Sydney Morning Herald had a little fun to help deserving Aboriginal children in education. That, with the anniversary and help from my family, enabled me to, to board at, at uh, St Francis Hostel in Dubbo to attend Dubbo High School. My dear mum was a good photographer, my dear Marjorie Bishop. She'd always have her little camera with her, and six years ago, Esther, have a, have a go with her camera. Take and borrow it and take a couple of pictures, and there'd be a bit of an inquiry when the film came back. Going to Sydney in 1963, um, working at the, I started working at the ABC for about six, seven months, then I applied for a cadetship at the Sydney Morning Herald as a press photographer. In those early days, press photography was all black and white. You just cut the page film, and learn how to process, print, and film, many old dark work. And uh, I was always sort of keen about it. it just, you could never stop learning. In those days, it, it was. It was um, photo-mechanical. It was talking about film processing, actually getting hands wet. In those days, they said, well, you're out on the road, you've got a camera bag with the equipment, and they'd give you assignments. Getting back, the sort of early morning rounds with um, those days. Newspaper, I had a, the radio that uh, uh, the lady was taking a sick child, children, to St Margaret's Hospital in Darlinghurst. I lady jumped out and the sister Anne Byrne from the hospital came out and uh, helped get this little boy out of the out of the car and he was kind of started to cry and she picked him up and I had my camera, 35mm camera, sort of ready with flash and uh, focus. He goes click and boom. So I put her arm up and I was saying, well, oh, don't take this picture, but I it. Anyway, it um, had a dramatic image. 1971, I won a News Photographer of Australia. And Sister Anne Byrne carrying a little sick child outside St Margaret's Hospital in Sydney. And so I kind of got, kind of got to the top of that. Um, then I progressed, I 
That's the Sydney Morning Herald, and I became a photographer with then Department of Aboriginal Affairs, based in Canberra in 1973. And I was based down there for about nine years. I travelled quite extensively around Australia, taking pictures of Aboriginal affairs, for Aboriginal affairs, and we're working in Brisbane at the uh, ECA. And um, we had a call to say that the Prime Minister was travelling to Northern Territory for this planned um, ceremony. So we get to Waddy Creek, a beautiful sunny, bright sunny day. And lots of people came from everywhere. And we, they had a ceremony under a bow, a bow shed. Um, with an obelisk with a plate on. And there, Mr. Whitlam performed the handing back of the soil to their old Uncle Vincent. So after the ceremony ended, I approached Mr. Whitlam and I said, May we reshoot that cut site in the bright sunlight? Beautiful blue sky. I said, Very well. So it was only 10 or 15 feet away. So I asked him to come out, put him into a position, and I assisted our dear old uncle Vincent, who had um, trachoma, sandy blight, as they call it. So I thought it wasn't very good. So I, I approached him and said, Do you mind, uncle, if we can take this picture again? He said, Very good, good, good boy, good boy. I led him out, set him up, had the deeds in one hand and then one hand out, holding his hand out. And Mr. Whitlam, as he did, just looked around, bent down and picked up a handful of soil. Well, let's do it. And that was used in Women's Weekly. And a, and, a, and a great story, wonderful publicity. Being an elder, in my capacity, I I'd like to um, impart some of my knowledge of photography, life's journey, to others and talk to people about what I did as a youngster, how I grew up, how I was treated, how I negotiated the life that I did. I was living in Sydney, I did some work, I did some uh, series of uh, portraits of elders out of time um, uh, out of Liverpool for the Shula Art Centre. And they devised a they devised a, a plan that the, the big dry portraits they did reduced and they were ported they were all portable way around to different schools in the Liverpool area. An artist, actor. Steve Williams and I go to different schools in that area and we would, we would show a, a short video about his life, my life, uh, some of my images. The schools have got these smart systems now that express about an upcomes your image uh, from a, a collection of mine at the Art Gallery of New South Wales and I'd talk about certain images to the children. I would take along a, a couple of bags of old cameras and uh, bring them out and show them the cameras that I used to use when I was a youngster and then later on as a working photographer. And uh, they, 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 were, they were thrilled. Education is paramount. And students or youngsters have more uh, accessibility to education. I think, well, these days there's opportunities, there's assistance to, to keep kids at school and some of them, you don't, you know, it's not a hundred percent, but out of 20 you might get four or five that continue. Four or five is good and along the way they, they could keep on going, and, and if they've got backup, they've got assistance to help them further their 
life, their education. They can maybe do better and go on and do stuff for other other folks down the track. <laughs>